Hello and welcome to Antiques Appraisal Day with the Historical Society of Carroll County. Uh, this is like the Antiques Roadshow of Carroll County, so we'll be interviewing a lot of folks today. But right now I'd like to introduce you to the chairman of this year's event. Okay, this is Jennifer Munch. Welcome everybody to the Carroll County Historical Society's 15th Annual Antiques and Collectibles Appraisal Day. Uh, this is the second year now that we have held this event at Grace Hall at Grace Lutheran Church. And uh, this is such a lovely facility. We really enjoy being here. Uh, this is an exciting day. People are coming in all day long, bringing treasures from their attics and uh, uh, things that are they've had in their family maybe for a long time. Things, uh, toys that they had when they were growing up that they've been keeping in a in a closet somewhere. And uh, we have appraisers who can give them an idea of the value of what they're bringing and can also tell them a little bit about the history of their item and, and the stories behind a lot of them. And every now and then somebody comes in with something that they have no idea is worth very much and it can turn out to be worth a good bit. And so this is just one service that, uh, that we provide here at the Carroll County Historical Society. We have uh, lots of volunteers who help us with this and, uh, and so it's, uh, it's a busy day for everybody. But we couldn't do this without all of our sponsors. We have three gold sponsors this year, Lehigh Cement Company, New Windsor State Bank, and M&T State Bank. Uh, our silver sponsors are Dr. James Leitner, Glenn Baer, Woodhaven Building and Development, and the Bel well, Veldosky Wealth Management Group. We also have a number of bronze sponsors. Jiffy Mart, Carroll Lutheran Village is one of our sponsors, Carroll Community College, Delaney, Leahy, Curtis and Beach uh, attorneys, and the Westminster Rotary Club also. Uh, we could not have this event without all of the support that they provide. So it's an exciting day. We're looking forward to finding some treasures and, uh, and telling people a little bit about their items that they've brought. And so, Enjoy this day, and uh, we'll see you, if not this year, we'll see you next year. Thank you. Okay, what's the story behind this? That it's a cherry boy. It was in my grandparents' house in Hanover. Um, I can't tell you how long they had it, but I know, you know, I'm 66, and from the time I was a little kid, I remember that cherry boy sitting on a stand in their living room. And when they passed away, we got it, and it sits on a stand in our living room, so, yeah. yeah. Well, it is plaster, which you may have already known, and it's, it's, a, it's painted. Uh, and I think stylistically, uh, we're looking at something from the early 1900s, again, when there was a very uh, late Victorian period when there was a great embellishment to the decorative elements we used in our homes. And this certainly fits in with that, uh, kind of an over-the-top uh, plaster sculpture. Now, it more likely than not would have been based on uh, something that may well be sitting in a museum somewhere. This was mass produced uh, and plaster, so uh, a less expensive uh, material that the masses could have afforded. I see basically a number that more likely than not indicates a mold number for the company that made this, but I don't see any other identifying marks on here, which isn't surprising. Um, now, obviously, it's nice to see it in the original surface. It looks like it's in really excellent condition given the age and given the material. A little bit of the paint has rubbed off, but like a lot of other antiques, less is better. You want to keep it clean. You don't want to try to touch it up uh, because I think it's uh, in, in great condition just the way it is. 28 inches on that, so it's really got some, some uh, visual appeal with the height and the colors in it. And again, I think the colors are consistent with it being from the late Victorian period. Uh, I'm going to do a quick look on the database here to see if I can get a comparable to flash up. Uh, I think it's one of these uh, items that in today's market, it wouldn't have a real broad market appeal just because, you know, we're looking at more minimalist approach in our, in our decorating schemes today. And this certainly represents kind of the height of the late Victorian era. Uh, you know, and again, I want to get some numbers to verify where I'm going to come out. But as, as a shop owner, if I had it in my shop, 
I would probably place it in the two to three hundred dollar range, looking for the person who wants to refine their uh, decorating scheme in the way that the people in the Victorian times would have done it, uh, and because this is that 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 period of time that we're we're trying to uh, fit this into. And uh, so let me sit down, and I'm going to try to come up with a good comparable that will okay. confirm where I think it should be uh, with that. So. Um, here we have a quilt that has, it's sort of a mystery. Um, we know that it was made based on the fabrics and the design, probably in, from about 1870 to 1900. Um, but if you look closely, and you might take your camera down here to do that, the ground of the center section is whiter than the ground, white ground fabric of the border. And if you also look at it, you'll see that this blue, the, these are, this design is called a mariner's compass. This, uh, this teal blue is bluer in all of the center mariner's compasses than it is on the border. And it's faded to almost a teal green, although the brown seems to be the same. And the brown looks very fresh. Um, the, I don't think it probably was either, but I do think as I look at more and more, look at it more and more, that the border is probably definitely added later. But using the same fabrics, and possibly the border was made and possibly even quilted um, at an earlier date and then stored, but not stored in the same place. So it's acidified a little bit just from the air and it's caramelized. That's why you see it as a slightly different color uh, than the center section, which is in really perfect condition. Um, this, this color scheme was typical of the late 19th century uh, in Maryland and other places. It's appliqued. These are appliqued on. These are pieced and the border, which is a, another typical feature of Maryland quilts throughout the 19th century, is having a, what is called a sawtooth border, appliqued rather than pieced. So uh, you can see the little stitches if you look up close. Um, there, I think, by looking at the quilting on this, that more than one person quilted it. It seems to be there's some really fine quilting stitches, and then there's some that aren't so fine. Um, the applique isn't the best applique I've ever seen, but it's really charming. Um, now, the, the other quilt that she brought in today was also made in the late uh, 19th century, or probably more uh, likely to have been made around 1900. Um, um, this is interesting applique pattern. It doesn't have a name. Um, red and white were popular popular color schemes for quilts made around 1900. It's in really good condition. The quilting is very, very nice. The stitches are pretty close together, but the applique is definitely crude. Um, I'm, I'm appraising the, these two quilts. This one probably around $200 and the uh, blue and brown one around 350 to 450. My husband's grandfather collected old books and autographs and about 30 and we ended up with maybe a thousand autographs wow. and I went through the piles and selected these are patriots it's all 18th century so you have John Hancock and Lafayette. I don't know what he said because I can't read French. And Patrick Henry's little card to get into the House of Burgess in Williamsburg. And this is Daniel Webster. And this is Henry Clay. And this is George Washington up here. Uh, this was a gentleman who was a senator, a statesman. And this, because it fit into the same time period, is John Wesley that established the Methodist Church. Right. However, a couple of weeks ago, I was looking, trying to read what it said, and it says, Dear Betsy, up there. And so I looked it up on the internet, and unfortunately, that's his paramour. So, <laughs> but it's framed, and I'm not taking it out. Right. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about the book and the vase. Oh, the book. <laughs> the book is by John Wesley. He was a brilliant man. And this is um, 18, 
methods for taking care of any malady that you have. It says 1768 here. It says methods of curing most diseases by John Wesley. Yes, and they're all very interesting kinds of things. You know, grinding up parts of frogs and all oh, that kind of thing, you know. So I brought that along just because I have John Wesley in there. And I don't know anything about the vase. It's got a mark on the bottom. Where did you get it? Uh, my husband is a physician, and one of his patients gave him really? that as a gift. And then I used to collect antique medical equipment for him. What is that? It's either for hearing fetal heart or hearing adult hearts, I, I think. Does it ring? No, it doesn't do anything. I think you just put this on the part of the anatomy you want to hear and listen, but I'm not positive of that. It's like a, a junior stethoscope. <laughs> what is it made of? I see that's fabric going around. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So that's what we're here to find out if anybody knows what this is. And you were a physician? You were retired? And what did you practice? Internal medicine. That was uh, many, many moons ago. Here in Chilcom. <laughs> I'm. Oh yeah. I'm. I'm 80 something. I'm not at this point. <laughs> okay. Because my great uncle collected autographs. Oh, did he really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, he ended up with thousands. We had boxes of these. Yeah, my my so great uncle had 50 some thousand autographs in his. What collection. happened to them? Well, when he passed in 1958, it was dispersed. He had, like he had the day book for the first six months of the Lincoln administration, and oh. that went back to the White House. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, he was from Baltimore, and he knew people like John Singleton Mosby. Oh, my goodness. And John Surratt was still alive at the time, the conspirator. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm the fourth generation of collectors, and my son's oh, the fifth generation of collectors. Oh, my collectors. gosh, that's wonderful. But these are wonderful. They are really wonderful. Monetarily, I'm not going to put a value on these, but they're worth quite a bit of money. I'd have to sit down and go over each one, look it up, and mm. I didn't bring any books with me okay. to do that. But you're talking thousands of dollars here, oh, thousands of dollars. So, But th this is a wonderful little grouping of Good. autographs. Wonderful. So... It's exciting. I'm glad you brought these in because I have been bored today. <laughs> oh, they're one. Uh, Wesley's got all these cures in this book. What else is this? That is a letter from a, another physician of approximately the same age talking about their ailments mostly. Okay. And I looked him up and I have a something I brought with me that tells you about this about gentleman. About that gentleman, yes. yeah. Nothing yeah. earth shattering. But, oh, this is really super, super. Thank you for coming to the 15th Annual Antiques and Appraisal Day, um, Antiques and Collectibles Appraisal Day. We're expanding our range these days to really look at some of the printed ephemera, stamps, baseball cards, things that are, uh, people um, might not consider antiques, but consider things worth keeping and, ke and making memories with. So I want to thank you all for uh, taking the time to view this. And please consider not only becoming a member of the Historical Society of Carroll County, we also can use volunteers. So please call us and give us the opportunity to get you into our family. Um, our website is www dot, let's see, hsccmd.org. Our telephone number is 410-848-6494, and my extension is 202, so call me. I'd love to talk to you about history and what you might do to get involved with preserving, collecting, and making it accessible to the public. Thank you. <laughs>